do we know about this guy? He's rich, he's a recluse, he's obsessed with A.J. Holmes. We're going to a property he inherited from a relative. Some of the rooms are full recreations from the murder castle. Dumet has blueprints, documents, artifacts. Totally sane, I'm sure. There are various elements we knew we wanted to explore when designing the hotel. From developing areas and set pieces that generated a constant sense of uneasiness and tension. To memorable trap rooms that forced the player into frantic life and death decisions. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We took a lot of inspiration from Holmes' original murder castle, as we wanted to capture the way that Holmes' castle was created to disorientate and confuse his victims. Welcome to the World's Fair Hotel. As cunning as Demet is, not everything in his castle runs like clockwork anymore. His operation has become so vast that he can't maintain everything, and the Lonic crew have turned up at just the right time to exploit that. The production design for the hotel needed to reflect the original design utilizing a Victorian style facade and castle turrets, interiors with ornate moldings and panelling, being made larger to accommodate the game's intention to be used as a vast labyrinth to create fear and horror. This included the hidden rooms, sliding walls, trap doors, and secret basements, but with extra central monitor rooms and death rooms, all hidden from the guests, providing multiple layers and multiple levels to explore, unveiling the horror within. Special attention was given to the design of the areas such as the lobby, the bar area, and the dining rooms to provide an authentic, believable Victorian hotel, bringing a feeling of magnitude and foreboding to intimidate the player. Guy? Is that you? The hotel guest rooms were designed to be opulent, yet aged, in keeping in style with furnishings and fittings, yet having additional modern electronic window shutters installed to trap the victims. Secret observation rooms were also built adjoining with hidden doorways to enter. Corridors were cleverly designed to include mechanical sliding walls hidden within the Victorian framework used to change the layout of the labyrinth throughout the hotel. Fuck. The murder inventions designed within locations included the suffocation and crushing rooms, furnaces and acid baths. The monitor room was a newly constructed area deep within the core of the hotel. This room allowed Demet the full control of the labyrinth and its workings. In The Devil and Me, we make use of a range of mechanics new to the Dark Pictures series to help convey the unsettling mood and threat of the hotel. With an expanded focus on exploration, the player spends a lot of the time exploring the hotel's labyrinthian corridors, and as each character revisits a shared area, the feel of it changes. Each character has their own unique light source, Erin and Jamie, as the practical sound and lighting techs, have fairly straightforward torches, with Erin's directional microphone providing an additional small light when in use. Mark, the camera operator, has his camera flash, lifting the darkness in short bursts and providing mini jump scares as the player suddenly sees something out of the gloom. Kate lights her way around with her makeup mirror, providing a small amount of light to fumble through the corridors. And then Charlie's sole light source is his own cigarette lighter, casting the hotel in its flickering orange light and barely really lighting anything at all. Jamie, over here. Each character experiences these shared areas differently through this, adding to the sense of the familiar hotel rooms changing with each visit. It's amazing. The Elm Hotel was originally built in the 1890s. It was converted into a spa later on until it was abandoned and finally chosen by Demet for his murder playground. Run! Some parts had been restored, like the rooms the characters stay in and the lush lobby and bar areas on the first floor. We work closely with concept art and art direction to create distinct color palettes and ornate assets that made those areas more inviting while still leaving something unsettling about their imperfections. But elsewhere, we could show the hotel and spa's original treatment rooms and the indoor pool which had fallen into disrepair and other thematically different places. Our second challenge was getting into Dumet's head. We knew that he was supposed to be a very meticulous man. He's the sole architect of this place and proud of his creations. Some rooms are deliberately left in disrepair. We created them with the base layers showing and we scattered building equipment around to tell the narrative that Dumet still has plans for them. Others he had completely purpose-built. That's where we used the mix of old brick and breeze block materials next to each other to create contrast. 
and on top of that, there are traps everywhere. Some of the most interesting areas to create were the ones which were supposed to be off-limits to hotel guests. We wanted to show the stark contrast of his personal space versus the one he hunts people in. The team went as far to even design Demet's handwriting, and we used that on boards and documents to show more of his personality. There's storytelling in every small detail. Lighting in The Wind Me is a bit different from the previous dark picture games. Since we have more explorations and more playable areas in the game for players to freely explore, we had to slightly adjust the way we used to do lighting by adding some new stuff, such as adding more guide lights in the environment for direction, or add some interactable light fixtures that you can trigger on and off by walking closer or away from them. So there are four types of lighting styles in the hotel. The first one is the regular hotel areas where everyone should feel safe and cozy. We try to use more bright, warm colored lights with different elegant light fixtures. And the second one is the areas that are either under constructions used as Dumas workshop or places only lit by moonlight or should be pitch black. We used cooler temperature lights or even blue lights for these kind of areas with very low light intensity and very heavy volumetric fog to enhance the claustrophobic vibe and to elevate the tension. So the third one would be the control room where Dumet watches and controls all the activities in the hotel. We want this room to be especially bright like an industrial warehouse with a cool, eerie mood to separate it from the other rooms. And the last one is all the rooms that are designed to be slaughter stages. Killing is like creating art to do mad, and he wants all his artworks to be presented epically with audiences, classical music, and beautiful lighting setup. So in these areas, unlike the others that have more neutral color in the lights, we tend to artificially light these areas with either theatrical lighting or use high contrast saturated lighting setup so that we know something is going to happen. If we don't do something, both of them will die, Mark. We wanted to provide players with a truly realistic, historical sonic experience whilst inside the murder castle. We researched multiple properties and buildings built within the same period as the original Chicago murder castle. Authentic door foley and sound effects elements were high on our priority list. We recorded multiple door openings, closings, handles, rattles and squeaks Throughout pre-production, we'd seen all the variations of emotion characters would be displaying when using the doors. Ranging from calmness through to blind panic and incensed rage, all these emotions could be channeled into the performance we recorded. Another element of the soundscape we went into considerable detail recording was floorboard and stair creaks. Virtually every step we took provided us with a distinctive and unique sound. We recorded these creaks in three states, running, walking and walking slow. To further add to this, as the characters climb higher inside the Met's murder castle, the recreaks will become more frequent as you enter unfinished rooms, exposed walkways, and the structural integrity of the hotel becomes more dangerous and unstable. In terms of the music, we chose various 19th century pieces of classical music and opera to accompany the murder scenes. These would have been the pop music tracks around the time of H.H. H. Holmes, providing a cognitive link between past and present. Classical music and opera accompanies a lot of the murder scenes, uh, often playing through a gramophone or a tannoy, which is then fed back through our bespoke impulse responses to allow the music to naturally echo throughout the cellars and corridors of the space. What? what is this? We took a similar approach as well with the abstract sound design, including nods to classic horror films with really discordant, unnerving piano impacts and bowed metal interspersed with electromagnetic recordings synths and ultra-modern distortion to provide that juxtaposition and that link through time uh, between the historical setting and the modern day story. <laughs> Designing the hotel as a play space presented different challenges than previous Dark Pictures games. We've gone from quite open environments in House of Ashes and Little Hope to a more enclosed one with the hotel. The ability to revisit previous environments at different points of the story, with different layouts and different emotional states meant that we had to collaborate very closely with each other to make sure we designed each area to cater for every requirement. We had to think how a lit corridor would feel if multiple characters roaming around it, versus the same corridor drenched in darkness with just a singular player character. 
Empty hotels are inherently eerie, and it allowed us to play with the idea of liminal space to try and create a murder castle that felt uncanny. It's something that felt truly unique. It's me! Get in here! Jamie? <sighs> Thank God! 